Good day, gentlemen. Hello. 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 Talk. My friends Marie and Argo here would rather like to know about the golden ratio. As the father of modern mathematics, I should handle this. <laughs> the golden ratio is is a special number, of which there are many. For example, this three here is a prime number. What's a prime number? A prime number is a number greater than one that cannot be formed by multiplying two other numbers. In other words, the only number that can be multiplied to get this three is itself and one. Let's take four. Do you think four is a prime number? One times four is four. Yes, but is there another number that can be multiplied to get four? Two. Two times two is four. Very good. And so four is not a prime number. What about five? No numbers beside from five and one can be multiplied to get five. So yes, five is a prime number. Correct. What is special about the nine? Nine is a square number. Any number multiplied by itself results in a square number. So if the three multiplies by itself, the product is... Nine. That 25 is a square number too. Because five times five equals 25. Very good. Thus, five is the square root of 25 and three is the square root of nine. Now, if we take the square root of three, we get another kind of special number called an irrational number, which is a number that cannot be written as a simple fraction. For example, 1.5 is a rational number because it can be written as three divided by two. Three is rational because it can be written as three divided by one. Even 0.33333 is rational because it can be written as one divided by three or one third. So a rational number can always be written as a fraction? And an irrational number can never be written as a fraction. Is the golden ratio an irrational number? It is. So am I. Oh, Pi! Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Is it about time? They say I'm irrational, but it's only because no one can figure me out. And you know why? Because Archimedes here... Uh... Archimedes here decided to take a circle and divide its circumference by its diameter. And you know what the answer was? Me! 3.141592653893 Shall I keep going? 7932384 Yes, I shall keep going. In fact, I go on and on forever and ever. I never stop. I go around in circles. I can't help it. Are you hungry? Would you like a piece of me? Maybe Newton over here can give us an apple and we can make apple pie. Who wants apple pie? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, pie. But I need to find the golden ratio. I can do that. The golden ratio. The golden ratio is approximately equal to 1.618. When the whole length divided by the long part is equal to the long part divided by the short part, you get the golden ratio, 1.618. This golden rectangle can be progressively split into a smaller square and rectangle. The smaller rectangles also have the golden ratio. It even works with just a line. Wow. But how do we use the golden ratio in architecture? Here is the Parthenon. And here is the golden ratio. The dimensions are the same. Argo, that's how we need to build our Parthenon. Mr. Pythagoras, thank you so much for everything. There is much more to learn. Space. I'm learning how to bake. You know, the cake for the party tomorrow? Tomorrow? No, Marie! The party is tonight, and it starts in like one hour and a half! What? We have to bake a cake right now. Tyler, 
I'm going to need your help. I'm going to watch the baking lesson here and give you the instructions as we go, okay? Everything you need is already there in the kitchen. What kind of cake do you need? A very merry peanut butter passion cake. Excellent! We have enough ingredients for a cake that serves... Six, seven, eight, nine, ten! Ten? Are you ready, gang? But I need a cake that serves fifteen. What should I do? It is simple, mon ami. When you give to Tyler the instructions, simply increase the recipe amounts by 50%. Oh, because 15 is 50% 50 more than 10. Originally, there were 10 guests. Now five more guests are coming. Five is half of 10, which equals 50% of 10. Which means that if we need 200 grams of peanut butter for a recipe that serves 10, we'll need 50% more peanut butter for a recipe that serves 15. Ah. And 50% more is 100 grams of peanut butter. Which means we'll need 300 grams of me! Exactement, mon ami. Are we ready? Let's, Let's go! go! Two hundred grams of sugar. That's one cup. Tyler, if there are 200 grams of sugar in one cup, how many grams are in two cups? <gasps> Whee! Butter, Tyler, mix in the naked butter. One tablespoon is 20 milliliters, so three tablespoons equals... No, 20 times three is 60. 60 milliliters! Three tablespoons equals 60 milliliters. One cup is 240 milliliters, and you will need one and a half cups. So multiply 240 by 1.5. 360. 360 milliliters in one and a half cups. Tyler, did you get that? in the oven and the cake is ready to go! Yay! You did it! Thank you, thank you! Thank you so much for the lesson, but we have to leave to go see how the real cake is turning out. It was our pleasure to help! And next time you need to get your cake on, we'll be here! Bye! Bye. To watch more, subscribe to our YouTube channel.